What time is it? It's 12 o'clock noon. Oh wow, it means it's lunch time. Well, in South Africa, but in other countries, it could be breakfast or supper or snack time. Hi everyone, my name is Shadea. My name is Shadea. Welcome to a video ministry of Grace TV. Here we serve bite sized spiritual meals, or you can call it Bible study online. This is every weekday. This is Pastor Dean Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food. We are still continuing with our series on the twofold purpose of God. And we are now finishing the crucifixion and prophecy. Now, so far we learned that while the patriarchs practice animal and blood sacrifices and use the tabernacle and its articles, yet they did not know that they were symbolic and the realities are fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. We also learn that despite the prophecies of the sufferings and the death of the Messiah, but the prophets were ignorant and unaware of its meaning as well as significance. Why? Because Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12, he says that they prophesied not for themselves, but for the people in the future. But not only the prophets, but also the twelve apostles were unaware and ignorant of Christ's sufferings and death. After Christ told the twelve apostles in Luke chapter 18 verses 31 through verse 32 that all that are written by the prophets concerning the sufferings and death of the Son of Man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, will be accomplished. But in verse 34, the Bible says, And they, the, the apostles, understood none of these things, referring to the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ. And this saying was hidden from them, neither they knew the things which were spoken to them. Again, while Christ's death was clearly prophesied in the scriptures, it was never understood and never taught as God's plan for salvation to be received by faith in the time of the patriarchs, prophets, and now we see that also in the time of the twelve apostles. Peter definitely did not take the death of Christ as good news, for when he heard about it, he then prepared swords to protect the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter uh, 22, we have the record. In one instance, in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 22, Peter even rebuked the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when Christ talked about his death and resurrection. Now, even after Christ's crucifixion at Pentecost, his death was not considered as good news. It was not preached as good news to be received by faith for salvation like we are in this time of the dispensation of grace, like in our time that we have to believe that Christ died, was buried, and rose again, and by faith we can be saved. That's not the case in the time of Pentecost. It is true that Peter at Pentecost spoke of Christ and his cross, but how? The answer is he blamed his hearers for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, seeking to bring them uh, to conviction and confession. In Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 23, Peter says that the people of Israel have taken Christ by their lowly's hands and have crucified him and put him to death. 
That's what the people of Israel did to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in Acts chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, Peter continued charging Israel with denying the Holy One and killing the Prince of Peace. That's the Lord Jesus Christ again. Now in both passages, Peter made Israel guilty and blame them for killing the Messiah. Again, Peter never presented the death of Christ as good news. And when the people got convicted and asked, what shall we do? Peter did not say, believe that Christ died for your sins and he was buried and rose again for your salvation. On the other hand, Peter said in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, he says, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter never offered Christ's death, burial and resurrection as the remedy for their sins. Israel as a nation must be repentant and admit her guilt for crucifying their Messiah. This was all in harmony with God's prophesied program in the scriptures, talking about the death of Jesus Christ. The nation of Israel must, must agree and confess and accept their guilt for committing that act of crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ for them to be saved. In Zechariah chapters 12, through 14, Prophet Zechariah prophesied about the coming deliverance of Judah and then, you know, the nation of Israel also. And one of the features during this time is that there will be mourning and grieving as a sign of their repentance as the people of Israel. You know, when they look at their Messiah, whom they have crucified. But of course, the coming of their Messiah and King will conclude their grieving. Now let's answer this question, how were the patriarchs got saved? Now before viewing the cross in the light of the mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul, let us take up briefly the salvation of those who lived before Christ was uh, crucified and before Christ raised up Apostle Paul and ushered in the dispensation of the grace of God. Again, the question is how were the patriarchs got saved? In Hebrews chapter 11, we have the answer by faith. The patriarchs got saved by faith. But the question is faith in whom and faith in what? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, for example, talking about Abel, it says, But by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Abel was considered righteous not because he trusted in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ or he, he believed in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. But the Bible says Abel was considered righteous because he believed in God as well as he offered the prescribed uh, offering made by God. And again, he had a different message to believe and obey. How about Noah? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, by faith Noah prepared an ark. Again, by faith, but then to prepare an ark. He prepared an ark. Again, Noah got saved not through uh, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross as we are today, but by believing in God and building an ark. And when he did that, the Bible says, he was considered righteous before God. Now, how about Abraham? In Romans chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, Abraham believed in God, or believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Again, there is by faith. Abraham believed, but not 
in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. The question is, what did Abraham believe for him to be righteous before God? Definitely not like the gospel we believe today. But Genesis chapter 15, verse 5 and 6, uh, the Bible tells us that Abraham believed in the promise of God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. That was the good news that he had to believe. And in that particular, that was the only way to be saved. That is also true with other patriarchs in the Bible. They had to believe and to do exactly what God told them in their particular or specific time. And only then that they were considered saved and righteous before the Lord. Beloved, tune in tomorrow as we talk about the crucifixion and the mystery. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your soul food.